I call this Onslow County Board of Commissioners meeting to order. Our first business tonight will be a prayer by Mr. Hudson, Mr. Hudson uh, and then the Pledge of Allegiance by David Cotton. Mr. Hudson. Thank you. If you would, please bow with me in prayer. Dear Lord, your scripture teaches us that you know our frame, that you know us. And Lord, surely you know that there are some days that are hard. Today, Lord, you receive Larry Johnson, a good man. He was a, a public servant here, dear Lord, and, and he was a friend, and he was a family man. And Lord, it's hard for so many people in Onslow County government today, and, and especially his family. We're comforted by knowing that, that Larry was also a child of yours. And so, Lord, we seek comfort and solace knowing that you received him this morning. Lord, we also know there are many people that we, we have no idea about that are out there that are hurting. Create in us, dear Lord, hearts that are soft for our fellow man so that we can help others as we're able to help others. Lord, whether they're at home and, and are suffering or far away across overseas fighting to protect our freedoms, Lord, just, just ask your blessings upon them in the way that you see fit because you see all things, including the future, and, and we're so limited, captured in this moment of time. Lord, we thank you for all you've given us. We thank you for this wonderful county. We thank you for the business before this body this evening, dear Lord. Thank you for continuing to allow Onslow County to thrive. And Lord, we ask your blessings upon the elected officials gathered here. Give them wisdom as they conduct the public's business. And in all things, dear Father, in all things, we are thankful to you, our Creator, for all that you've given us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Mr. Cotton. To the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. I'd like to thank everyone for coming tonight. I'd like to uh, welcome those that are watching uh, by television. Our, um, our sheriff, we appreciate having you here tonight. Welcome. At this time, if you have not turned your cell phones down to off or vibrate, please do so. The county affords the public two opportunities to speak. The first opportunity for public comment will be for three minutes, and it will be for anything that is on tonight's agenda. The second public comment will come towards the end of the meeting. It'll be for five minutes, and it is uh, to cover anything that this Board of Commissioners has authority over. If you, after you've signed up at the back of the room, your name will be called as you approach the podium. Please give your name and address to the clerk. Make your comments to the board in its entirety. Please be respectful, no audience participation, and the board reserves any responses to commissioner's comments. At this time, if there is no other um, information, I ask for to adopt the agenda. I have a motion and a second to adopt the agenda. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries unanimously. If everyone has looked at the consent agenda and there's no conflict, I have a motion to ad adopt the consent agenda. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor for the consent agenda say aye. 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 Passes unanimously. Our first public comment, Mr. Manager, do we have anyone signed up for the three-minute segment? Madam Chair, there are no individuals that have signed up for the first public comment period. Very well. We'll move into the presentation by Dr. Diane Rashad on the waterways, and then after that, Mr. Manager, if you'll take item five and six. Good evening, Commissioners. Good evening. It's been about 15, a little bit over 15 years now that we've been collecting water samples in our county on our waterways. Uh, 
We've got 28 surface sample sites. We go out there every two weeks to sample from each one, and that has been progressing along. Tonight, I'm going to be talking about two of the various parameters that we analyze for. Last time I presented before you, it was discussing oxygen and bacteria. Tonight, I'm going to be talking about salinity and temperature. Salinity is measured in PPT, which stands for parts per thousand. There's different categories of water based on the salt content. Fresh water is less than 0.5 parts per thousand. Brackish waters, a lot of times people you know, hear about brackish water, but they're not quite sure what brackish means. That's between a half of a uh, 0.5 parts per thousand and 30 parts per thousand. Saline would be 30 to 50. A good example of that, ocean water that we have right out here in, in Onzo County is between 32 and 36 parts per thousand of salt content. Brine would, be happen, would occur if you had a desalination facility and you're doing a discharge. That's a much stronger salt content. We do have um, various issues that occur with salinity, and a lot of those are driven by drought and rainfall. What you see on your tablet screens are two of our locations. One is Willis Landing down in Sneeds Ferry. The other one is Halls Creek located, excuse me, not Sneeds Ferry, uh, Swansboro. The other is Halls Creek right there in Swansboro. They are oppositely affected by rainfall events. Willis Landing generally has a salinity up around 30 parts per thousand. You can tell when we have rain events that flush a lot of fresh water down through because the salt content drops. Conversely, Halls Creek is generally very fresh, and you can tell when we have droughts because the salt wedge manages to get up into that creek and turn the water very salty. So by looking at this graph, back in 2002, many of you probably remember the, the drought that we had at that time, Halls Creek got all the way up to 30 parts per thousand a salinity, so it got almost up to, to ocean water concentration of salt. 2013, 2014, we've had a, quite a bit of rain, so Halls Creek was very much fresh, and Willis Landing, where you usually think of it being more brackish kind of water, or quite salty, was all the way down into the fresh range. So looking at these, there's different things that occur in our waterways, and that's important because it can impact the, the aquatic species that live there. If you have a sudden flushing of fresh water come through with a, a big rain event, it could trap species that like salt water. Conversely, during very dry periods, we could have salt species moving up further into waterways. So you know, their motion back and forth can change. Uh, an example of salt coming up very far, we had reports of blue crab in the New River about halfway up to Richlands from Jacksonville. So they were quite a ways up. And the water becoming too fresh to suddenly from a rain event uh, can, like I said, it can also have impacts and tra trap the fresh species, excuse me, the salt-like species up above them where a tributary put in a lot of fresh water down below them. Water temperature cycles all over the place. We've got the seasonal cycling of water temperature. We, with the water's very warm during the summertime, it cools down during the wintertime. We also can have sudden changes in water temperature brought about by rain events. If it's cold rain falling right into the water versus if it's a very hot summer day and we have a sudden downpour and it's landing on hot pavement, hot asphalt, it absorbs that temperature, goes down through our storm drain system, goes into a waterway, it can raise the water's temperature. So we can have different changes going on with the temperature. One impact on our waterways is lack of shading. So you may have or have been around very small creeks or waterways where there's a lot of tree canopy covering across the waterway versus some of our more open waterways where there's a lot more sun. And that will have a big impact on the water's temperature. Another couple of examples, Mill Creek down by Sneeds Ferry is much more open. There's some uh, salt marsh flats there that you've got the salt grasses. You don't have a lot of tree canopy down there. And the water gets up to 30 degrees plus Celsius, which equates to about 90 degrees Fahrenheit. So the water gets quite warm. The New River at R4, that's the Roadstown Road site. 
there's a lot of tree canopy there. And during those same times of year, it's only getting up to 75 degrees. So that's a big temperature difference. In the air, you know the difference between 75 and 90. The fish, the aquatic life, also feels that difference between 75 and 90. Um, the, the warmer the water is, the less oxygen it can carry. So you've got the temperature stress, you've got a lower oxygen amount of stress, and for the same temperature, the amount of salinity will also impact the amount of oxygen present. This table uh, shows that, for example, at 20 degrees Celsius, if the water's fresh, it can hold up to 9.1 milligrams per liter of oxygen. If it has 35 parts per thousand of salt, it can only hold 7.2 milligrams per liter of oxygen, so it can't hold as much. So uh, the trifecta, for example, of adverse conditions would be very hot water that because of the uh, dry period has gotten very salty, you've got the, the low oxygen content out there and the fish are very, very stressed. So those are some conditions that we look for to see if they might be occurring. Talking about it, you know, the temperature being a stressor. One of the things, uh, the last couple of weeks, especially during July, we had several days, several, couple of weeks in a row where the temperature kept getting above 90 degrees without any rain occurring. So it was a hot spell, it was a prolonged dry period spell, and we were looking to see what was going on with some of these waterways because of the dissolved oxygen at a couple of them was getting very, very low, and looking to see if we were getting any kind of a fish kill occurring. We did have one location that did have a small fish kill, and I mean very small, I counted six fish, and that was down at Turkey Creek, down there again in Sneeds Ferry area, a reportable event is 25 fish. So I did let um, Division of Water Resources know that I'd, we had seen six. Uh, Peggy Garner, since she lives down that way, went the next day to double check it again to see if you know any more had showed up, and she didn't see any. So you know, hoping that that was it. But again, the water is very warm. The dissolved oxygen content is quite low, and if we go through another extended period of time with 90 plus degree days without any rain events occurring, there's the potential again for larger fish kills to occur. Again, this one was very small. I only counted six little fish there, um, but was that something that we do look out for during this time of year? And that's the main thing to catch you up on that we've been doing and the things that we look for when we go out there and we're doing the sampling. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to try to answer them. Uh, Dr. Richard, I've got a, a question or two about um, Northeast Creek by Camp Lejeune after you come through the overpass and go across Northeast Creek Bridge. Mm -hmm. It seems like there's always a pungent odor there. It's, it's almost like a sewage smell, and it's not just occasionally. It's just about all the time. And then another place on the bypass after you cross the Lewis Sewell Bridge coming this way, mm -hmm. There's a creek there, I don't know the name of it, but same smell, same pungent, uh, you, like, I don't know if it's marsh or if it's, uh, it smells like sewage to me, but. It might be also a very sulfurous kind of an odor. That'll happen during low tide, that the, um, the marsh sediments and in, in, in those waterways, the sediments there are anaerobic, and when they're exposed during low tide, you start getting the sulfur. Uh, fumes, the, the like hydrogen sulfide. It's like a sulfur smell too. A rotten eggs kind of, yeah, yeah, yes. Exactly. That the hydrogen sulfide has a rotten egg odor and that's because the, those, those marsh soils are generally anaerobic and when they're exposed, they're releasing those gases and then the tide comes back up and you don't smell them. So uh, depending on what the tide is going, you'll smell them more or less. Okay. Any further, Jack? Uh, Anybody else? Mm. D Diane, I've got a question. Sure. Um, does, in the depth of the water, is the oxygen level higher or the same regardless of the depth of the water? It changes with depth. Usually you have the most oxygen at the very surface, okay. and we're taking <laughs> our samples from within about the top foot. So if we're only getting one and a half uh, milligrams per liter of oxygen at that top foot and the water's 20 feet deep, 
there's no oxygen down there. Uh, that's why if any of you have been near a pond during the summer and it's hot and you see the fish up at the surface doing this bubble breathing up there at the very top, right. they're mm -hmm. oxygen stressed, mm -hmm. there's not oxygen down deeper in the water, and they're coming up to try to breathe. Yeah. So uh, mm -hmm. our waterways, there's the most oxygen concentration will be at the, 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 the surface depth, and it decreases as depth increases. <clears throat> I had a gentleman a few weeks ago, and Bob Dupree, I hope you're watching, asked me why fish jump. And the only thing that I can think is because when they're coming up to get um, more oxygen, they're coming up out of the water. And, and is that why fish jump? Generally, they just come up to the very top and do this kind of thing when they're, when they're breathing. I really don't know why a fish jumps. <laughs> <laughs> they don't know how to slow down when they get to the top and they come maybe right maybe out. Maybe a bigger fish was there and it scared it right out. I don't know. Maybe they hey, thought, a wall. Maybe I'm going to make it up. You just swear to it, okay? And we'll go along with that. It might have seen a bug it liked. I, I just don't know. <laughs> well, that they, makes more sense than they're looking around to see where they're at. But we they, won't go there. I think they just get excited and want to get in the boat with you. <laughs> uh, we, if we, there's we no... That occur, so yeah. <laughs> If there's no further, uh, we thank you. Thank we'll you. look forward to your next report. Good evening. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> Jeff, if you'd like to take the next two items, please. Thank you, Madam Chair. Item five is a public hearing. One public hearing is scheduled during this meeting. It's Zoning Text Amendment LTXA 2015-4. Uh, we'll follow the same order we normally do for public hearing. First, there will be a staff introduction given by Mr. Ben Warren, our planning director, followed by the public hearing. We will first hear from members of the public, or excuse me, the, if there's a member of the applicant or petitioner that wishes to speak, we'll ask for that person first, then members of the public, uh, and then we will close the public hearing. Following the closure of the public hearing, there would be commissioner discussion, when, during which time discussion or questions may be asked to the staff or the public, and then finally a possible commissioner decision. Mr. Warren, please proceed with the staff introduction. Thank you, Mr. Hudson. Good evening, Madam Chairman, Mr. Vice Chairman, and Commissioners. The text amendment that we have for your consideration this evening was a result of a petition that was submitted by Parker and Associates. There are two sections of the ordinance that are being proposed for amendments, the first being Section 1801, which is the definition section of the zoning ordinance. Uh, essentially, what they are requesting is an amendment to the definition for a recycling facility. The way it exists right now, recycling facility is currently taking in um, concrete, stone, other products that can be recycled for um, um, suitable fill or for landscaping type materials. The proposed um, change would expand the list of materials that could be accepted at a, at a recycling facility to include inert debris, uh, construction materials, and also materials from land clearing activities. So instead of just taking in this concrete products, it could take in a range of things from you know, stumps, uh, dirt, um, construction materials like shingles or siding or um, other types of materials. So it would pretty significantly expand the list of materials that could be accepted at those types of facilities. Um, currently, recycling facilities are allowed in four of our zoning districts, the Rural Agricultural District, the Highway Business District, and both of our industrial districts. And it's a use that's permitted by right with supplemental requirements. And so the second part of the amendment includes changes to 1406.26, which is the supplemental requirements for recycling facilities. And those changes include um, really strengthening the language regarding the buffers for these types of facilities. The previous language just said that buffers are required, but we've changed that to say that essentially buffers are required consistent with other sections of the ordinance that are already in effect. Um, all materials would have to be screened from public view with some type of opaque fencing with chain link fencing being specified as not a suitable source for the opaque fencing. Materials kept on site no longer than 45 days, whether they're to be recycled or disposed of. Waste would have to be kept in a fully enclosed structure for operations in either the highway business uh, district or the rural agricultural zoning district. And also dust control measures would be required to uh, either watering the site or some other type of means to prevent the dust from traveling onto adjacent properties. So we have reviewed the proposed amendments and they are consistent with the uh, strategies and goals outlined in the Onslow County Comprehensive Plan. And the planning board did review this text amendment and made a unanimous recommendation for approval. 
So with that, I'll turn it over to uh, Mr. Hudson for the uh, public hearing. Thank you, Mr. Warren. This time we'll open the public hearing on Zoning Text Amendment LTXA 2015-4. I'd first call upon the petitioner, if the petitioner wishes to come forward and provide additional information beyond uh, that which Mr. Warren has already provided. Please set your name for the record. John Parker, 306 Newbridge Street. Uh, <clears throat> just a couple of points. Uh, Ben's people did another good job as usual. What, what we saw was that our initial zoning when we, when we set up the zoning ordinance for Onslow County, the definition of recycling facility did not anticipate uh, the C&D materials that we're able to handle today. Uh, we started, our, we set out to request an opportunity to have a location to collect materials and then relay those materials. Staff, uh, in reviewing what was the current definition and the conditions that were associated with that, uh, saw that uh, an opportunity to expand on the conditions to protect adjoining properties, provide additional buffering requirements and other conditions, and also to expand on uh, the ability to recycle or to, to actually work the materials on the site as long as the materials were not there longer than 45 days. Uh, so this gives us an opportunity to do something that we cannot do today under the current zoning literally anywhere under the definition of a recycling facility. And I'd be glad to try to answer any questions after the hearing. I'll be present. Thank you. Thank you, <laughs> Thank you Mr. Parker. This time, um, I would note that there are no members of the public that have signed up on the sheets that were available prior to the start of the meeting. So I'll make a call to the audience. If any member of the audience did not have an opportunity to sign up prior to the meeting, I would now like to speak regarding Zoning Text Amendment LTXA 2015-4. Now would be the time to come to the podium. With no one signed up to speak and no individuals coming forward to the podium, the public hearing is hereby closed. This item is now available for commissioner discussion and possible decision, Madam Chair. Okay. What's the board's pleasure? Motion to approve. I have a motion and a second. Uh, is there any discussion, any questions that the board would like to have of um, Mr. Parker or Mr. Warren? Madam Chair, I do have a question. And that is, um, I, I think it's a great idea. And with the expansion of what we'll be able to take in, does that impact the workload of those that are there on site? I, I'm just wondering the potential of with the expansion, how much more will that will require from the actual employees on site? And, and I don't know if that's an, a question that can be answered, but it just leads me to kind of think about that process there. Yes, ma'am. Um, that's a great question. And essentially the recycling facilities that uh, Mr. Parker is referring to would be privately owned facilities. So it wouldn't have any impact necessarily on Onslow County. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, is there any further? I have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Passes unanimously. Mr. Hudson. Thank you, Madam Chair. Commissioners, item six, general items. The first three general items, A, B, and C, are all financial items. I'll call upon Ms. Jessica Roberts, our Deputy Finance Officer, to come to the podium and remain at the podium for items A, B, and C, introducing each of those in turn. Ms. Roberts. Good evening, commissioners. Um, item, the first item is the 2015 audit contract. Uh, we have received a contract from Carr Riggs and Ingram, formerly Pittard Perry and Crone, to conduct the annual audit for the fiscal year ending June 30th, 2015. The fiscal year 1415 annual audit fee is the same as last year at $55,500. At this time, we respectfully request your approval of this contract. Do I have a motion? So moved. A second? Second. Any questions? Yeah, I do. Um, this Carl Riggs, the Carl Riggs and Ingram, I because I received something in the mail the other day on ethics, because, you know, sitting on some of the boards, I said I have to do ethics documents. Have they already been hired for that particular part? It's a part of the annual process, so they have already been in contact with us and okay. sent some information out, yes. Thank you. Okay. Any further? All in favor say aye. 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 Passes unanimously. <coughs> Item B is an amendment to the capital project ordinance for waterway maintenance project. 
the proposed amendment to the capital project ordinance for waterway maintenance project for funds approved during the annual budget process. As part of the fiscal year 15-16 budget, the Board of Commissioners approved an additional $400,000 of tourism funds for this project. The amendment will add to the 15-16 appropriation and bring the total amount of county dollars available to $778,076. What's the board's pleasure? Motion to approve. And a second. second. Uh, questions, and I guess more so than a question, I would just like to state this is tourism money, and it is the board's policy each year to take and allocate a portion of tourism to waterway maintenance. So this money was set aside during the budget here, and out of the tourism money, um, and it is imperative that we continue to set money aside for dredging projects because it's much more to dredge than one annual year's appropriation. So does anyone else have any comments? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Passes unanimously. Item C is an amendment to the Onslow, Can Onslow Pines Park Redevelopment Phase 1 Project Ordinance. Um, the proposed amendment to the Capital Project Ordinance will allow finance to take the steps to close the project. We have received notification from the Parks and Rec Department is complete at this point at this time. What's the board's pleasure? <laughs> Motion to approve. Uh, first and a second comments. Uh, Jessica, this is money that they did not spend and it will go back into the general fund, is that correct? Yes, Chairman. Okay. Hearing no further, uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Passes unanimously. Thank you. Thank you. Item D, New River Lease Child Welfare Building. Call on Ms. Heidi Bauer, Social Services Director, to report on this potential lease. Ms. Bauer. Good evening, Commissioners. Also, County leases 1249 Hargett Street to house the offices for operations of the Department of Social Services, Child Welfare, Legal, and Administrative Divisions. Um, the building is 13,000, roughly 13,000 square foot. The lease is for the period from July 1st, 2015 through June 30th, 2016 for an amount not to exceed $163,708.92. I would respectfully request that the Board of Commissioners approve the lease and authorize the Chairman to sign the documents. Where is this money coming from, Ms. Bauer? Um, that money actually is county money. Uh, there is a reimbursement factor. Uh, we get about 40% back from the state with that. Any further questions? We, we're still doing the maintenance. Do we do the maintenance on that building too, or is that part of the land, I mean the property owner? We are responsible for the maintenance on that building. And as far as the 163, was that about the same amount last year that we paid for? Last year for all the spaces that we had in New River, we were spending $327,000 for the year. Why such a, yeah. a huge reduction? <clears throat> we have... Um, moved out of one section of that building, mm -hmm. um, and, and we're utilizing a different section in a different way so that we can house more staff. Okay. And when the human services building is completed, we will no longer need that, and we will be able to take this money and put towards debt service to pay for our own building. Yes, ma'am, we will. Hallelujah. <laughs> I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Passes unanimously. Thank, Thank you. Item E, purchase of a Caterpillar landfill bulldozer. Mr. Scott Boss, our solid waste director, will be available to present this item and answer any questions. Mr. Boss. Good evening. Hey. Madam Chairman, Commissioners. Currently, the landfill has two bulldozers. One is over 10 years old and has over 10,000 hours on it. Um, this bulldozer has required 41 service calls in the last two years, each call resulting in multiple hours of a downtime, which equates to lost dollars. The second bulldozer is six years old, has over 4,000 hours on it. 
same thing. Multiple, multiple service calls, multiple lost days of uh, productivity. One of the concerns with the bulldozers is it is um, the parts come out of Raleigh, so all the parts are shipped to Wilmington to a storefront. There, so there are no lo local service dealers. It is our proposal to purchase a Caterpillar uh, D6 bulldozer with a waste handling package and a six-way blade for waste management as well as uh, um, general maintenance at, at the landfill. Okay. Any, any mm -hmm. questions? Do I have a motion? I do have a question. Let's, let's, do I have a motion yes. first? Yes. Uh, do I have a second? Yes, ma'am. Okay, now let's have questions. Uh, the question I have with the 41 service calls and the 31 service calls, were those units under warranty? No, ma'am, with those, oh, the so age did. of those machines, the warranties have been long, long expired. Oh. So with this, we'll have a manufacturer's warranty. Did those have extended warranties as well, or no, are they you did able not. to? No, they did not. It's a standard five-year warranty. Okay. Uh, since, since, this, since this is a Caterpillar machine, has a, there's a local service dealer which can provide service if needed. Uh, the cost for these uh, <clears throat> for this equipment is coming out of the uh, solid waste fund. Correct. The tipping fees, right? There are no tax dollars for this machine. So Correct. this will not come out of the general fund or impact the um, general mm -hmm. budget. That's correct. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. All in favor, say aye. 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 Passes unanimously. Item F: Abandonment of a portion of Meadowview Road. Dr. Megan Doyle, Assistant County Manager, will present this item and will be available to answer questions of the board. Dr. Doyle. Good evening, Madam Chair, Mr. Vice Chair, Board of Commissioners. Um, <clears throat> as you know, last meeting you all approved the contract for the vehicle maintenance facility. One of the things that we need to do in order to ensure the security of the buildings that will be housed on that property to include what's already there at the solid waste facility and the large equipment housed by that facility as well as the myriad of vehicles that will be um, serviced at the vehicle maintenance facility is to control access. As a result, we're asking the Department of Transportation to abandon a small portion, about 1,376 feet, of Meadowview Road, all of which is encompassed by Onslow County property, so that we can then close it and control access to that property. Uh, so the first um, part of action that we need for this particular item is to request through a resolution for the abandonment from the Department of Transportation, and then we'll come back at a later date for a public hearing once we receive information back from the Department of Transportation. Board's pleasure. Motion to approve the resolution. Uh, one question, uh, Megan. The um, abandonment of the roadway, is that a dead-end road? It's us doing this is not going to affect any traffic movement at all. No, in fact, the only property owner, owner around this section, as well as the section that's already been abandoned to us, mm -hmm. is us, is Onslow County. Okay. No further. All in favor say aye. 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 Passes unanimously. Thank you very much. The next two items, items G and H, are airport items. I call on Mr. Chris White, our airport director to present both items G and H in succession. Mr. White. Good evening, commissioners. <clears throat> the first item I have before you tonight is the acceptance of an FAA grant, AIP number 37, and award of the apron construction contract. On May 18th, the Board of Commissioners approved a project ordinance for the 2015 Aircraft Apron Rehabilitation Project. The purpose of this project is to extend the useful life of the portion of the existing pavement to provide for a continued utilization. This apron will be used to support aircraft charters, large corporate military aircraft, and airport, airline remain overnight aircraft. The FAA concurs that this project is necessary and intends to issue a discretionary grant in the amount of approximately $1,508,965 to complete the work. These funds are not available every year. They are competitive and based on need. Subsequently, these projects are funded on short notice and must be designed and bid on a very tight schedule. If approved and accepted, this project will be funded by the 2015 FAA discretionary grant from the Airport Improvement Program and passenger facility charges. No local tax dollars will be used and all grants and PFCs are based on user fees. 
Three bids were received on July 17, 2015, and Barnhill Construction Company was the lowest responsive responsible bidder. Their bid was in the amount of $1,312,625. The uh, the difference is the design and construction management services. Staff respectfully requests the Board of Commissioners accept the proposed FAA grant and award the construction contract to Barnhill Construction Company and authorize the Chairman to sign any associated documents on behalf of the county. What's the Board's pleasure? So moved. Mm -hmm. Do I have a second? Uh, Chris, I have a question. Yes, ma'am. Uh, has the grant already been awarded? We have a draft of the grant. The FAA has not sent us the final documents yet. We expect those any minute. Okay. If we assign this contract to Barnhill, um, we're obligating ourselves to that amount. Are we obligating ourselves before we get the money? We will not issue the notice to proceed prior to the receipt of the grant. I'm sorry. Say that again. We, we will not issue the notice to proceed prior to the receipt of the grant. Okay. So we'll have to have the grant in hands before we issue the notice to proceed. Okay. So the county's not going to be left on the hook if the grant doesn't come through? No. No. Okay. I have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Passes unanimously. Continue. The next item I have is the Airport Safety and Maintenance Program, which is administered by the North Carolina Department of Transportation Division of Aviation. In addition to development project assistance, the NCDOT Division of Aviation administers an airport safety and maintenance program <coughs> that uses state funds to assist publicly owned and operated airports with airfield safety and maintenance projects. These projects range from resurfacing to fencing and have proven to be a tremendous value to Onslow County. Our JLS Airport desires to be considered for continued safety and maintenance support projects by the NCDOT, which requires a sponsor's letter of commitment the letter of commitment requirement is standard and similar to the FAA requirements already in place, and the commitment includes a resolution from the sponsor. This will be valid for a period of five years, <clears throat> and staff has reviewed the requirements and recommends approval. This coming year, the FAA, or the NCDOT proposes to do a little over $300,000 worth of work on the airport at no cost to the county. So, the specific action requested is the staff requests the uh, Board of Commissioners to approve the NCDOT resolution, letter of commitment, and authorize the chairman, county manager, and appropriate staff to sign on behalf of the county. Mm. What's the board's pleasure? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. Chris, I have a question. The amount of the county's obligation, is there a financial obligation the amount that I see here is um, 300,000 by DOT what's our commitment zero there are no monies involved in our commitment no okay any further questions all in favor say aye aye, aye. aye. passes unanimously continue item I is resolution 15-015 in support of reallocating the distribution of sales tax from point of sale to per capita basis. Uh, commissioners, this is a resolution that's before the board. At this time, I will read the resolution into the minutes. Resolution 15-15. In support of reallocating the distribution of sales tax from point of sale to per capita basis. Whereas North Carolina's current method of distributing sales tax from the state to its 100 counties is based on a formula whereby 75% of the sales taxes collected are distributed based on point of collection, with 25% being distributed based on a per capita method of distribution. And whereas modification of the method of sales tax distribution with greater weight being given to the per capita method of distribution would benefit 83 out of the 100 counties in North Carolina, including Onslow County and whereas Senate Bill 369 is currently being considered within the North Carolina General Assembly and would modify the distribution of sales taxes collected by the state of North Carolina by creating a more fair distribution of sales taxes among counties through the movement to a greater weighting of distribution based upon the populations of counties. And whereas the projected impact of the change proposed in Senate Bill 369 for Onslow County 
could result in an increase of over $9 million per year by fiscal year 2019-2020. And whereas all but one municipality, the town of North Topsail Beach, within Onslow County are projected to gain greater sales tax revenues through the passage of Senate Bill 369, and whereas provided Senate Bill 369 is passed into law, the Onslow County Board of Commissioners would have a source of recurring revenue which would allow the county to consider appropriations to the town of North Topsail Beach for efforts such as public parking lots, beach accesses, and beach maintenance, which equal or exceed the amount of funding currently estimated to be lost by North Topsail Beach. And, whereas the County of Onslow faces unique challenges, such as 40% of the land mass of the county is not taxable, over 170 mobile classroom units are currently in use by the public school system. The 10-year capital improvement program of the public school system calls for tens of millions of dollars in additional construction. The community college's infrastructure is inadequate to meet existing needs. And, whereas since 2009, Onslow County government has instituted the most sweeping <coughs> reductions in force in the county's history, coupled with two tax increases. And, whereas Onslow County is the home of our nation's heroes, and must invest in necessary services and infrastructure in order to meet the basic needs of our military families and county citizens. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Onslow County Board of Commissioners that Onslow County fully supports the passage of Senate Bill 369 and encourages all other counties in North Carolina, as well as municipalities within the state, to immediately pass resolutions in favor of this legislation. Be it further resolved, that the county manager is directed to inform the public of Onslow County of this issue and to widely publish this resolution along with supporting information. That concludes the resolution, Madam Chair. Thank you. <clears throat> What's the board's pleasure in regards to the resolution? I say pass the resolution. Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 I got a question about it, though. Not. I'm, I'm, I'm in favor of it, but I want to ask Jeff a question about the, if this, um, res if this resolution goes through and this uh, tax um, distribution is approved, which I don't, you know, we don't know, but what effect does that have on Onslow County's special legislation that we had on the 40-60 split and our way of dispersing the 40-60 the split? Would it be dead after this or? Does it nullify our 40-60 split, or can we still apply that if we need to? Sir, there, there are two completely separate issues. This legislation, um, in its first draft, in its first draft, the legislation talked a little bit about how counties would then distribute sales taxes. That, that language was removed several drafts ago. Uh, so right now, Senate Bill 369 only talks about the method in which sales tax is distributed from the state to the counties, and it, it leaves unchanged any local authority that's currently in place for the counties to distribute sales taxes that it receives to the municipalities inside the county. It okay. doesn't have anything to do with, with the distribution of sales tax from the county to the towns. Okay, that was a question I didn't know Seemed like I did read the first draft of it, and it sort of left that 40-60 split out and didn't <laughs> leave too much options for the county. So does your vote stand? It, my vote's yes on it. Okay. There was nothing pulled off of uh, the consent agenda. At this time, Mr. Manager, do you have uh, anyone signed up for the five-minute public comment? Ms. Slater's re retrieving those now, Madam Chair. Okay. Madam Chair, there are no individuals signed up for the second public comment period. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Manager, do you have public comment? Or Commissioner? Manager's comment? Yes, ma'am, I'll have a comment. <laughs> <laughs> Thank um, you. Just, just one note, Madam Chair, members of the commissioners. Uh, we, we tonight were, were in need of an approval from the board for rent in the amount of $163,000. 
uh, and that's rent that we've been paying for a long time for, for properties that, that have been challenging at best in, in New River Shopping Center. And we know that uh, our DSS employees there have dealt with a lot. Uh, most recently, they've been dealing with continuing roof leaks and uh, putting plastic over machines continuously. Uh, at our next meeting, staff should have available for the board information to move forward on the Consolidated Human Services building that the board uh, put into motion some months ago. Uh, the design is, is complete. Is we will have bids and uh, we'll be bringing back to you information on both the financing package and also moving forward on that project. In addition, we should have information on two other construction projects in our capital projects program, uh, one of which is court facilities and the other being the replacement Richlands Elementary School. So over the next couple of weeks, staff will be working on, on putting all of that together uh, to bring back to the Board of Commissioners. So at the August 17th meeting, uh, it may be a, a construction event heavy uh, board meeting, but these are all items which the Board of Commissioners have been dealing with for a number of years, and it looks like uh, we're able to bring them to fruition at, at this time. So ha that having been said, uh, the only other thing I would say is that uh, county administration certainly sends our condolences uh, to Larry's family. Uh, they, our, they are certainly in our prayers. He was an excellent county employee, and it seemed like he could talk to anybody. He could talk to anybody and, and just had a great relationship with all members of the public. And I'm, I'm not sure when you have someone that unique how you ever replace that type of individual. But uh, he will be sorely missed. I should also note that his wife, Linda, was a longtime employee of Onslow County as well. And so uh, she and her family are in our prayers. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Mr. Manager. <clears throat> At this time, we have um, commissioner's comment. Mr. Jarman. Would you go first? I don't have a lot to say, except I will err on the side of what Jeff was just saying. And for the people out there in, that's watching tonight that didn't know, we have lost Larry Johnson. And as Jeff said, I don't know a man in this county could talk to people like Larry. Uh, Larry could go to people, two people fighting, and leave them hugging and kissing. <laughs> Uh, I mean, he just could, he just knew how to talk to people. And uh, we're going to miss him. We're all going to miss him. I, I know I'm going to miss him. I talk to Larry almost daily. Uh, he would call me almost daily. And I'm going to miss those phone calls, and my heart goes out to the family. I know they've lost a, a great husband, a great father, a great grandfather, and we've all lost a great friend. He loved Onslow County and uh, we're gonna miss him. Thank you, Mr. Jarman. Ms. Williamson. <clears throat> I just share our condolences as well to the family and also to the employees that have worked with him. I personally did not get to know him, but just talking with the other commissioners and the type of person that he was I, I know he's going to be hard to replace the day and time that that comes, but I pray blessings and peace of mind to the family tonight. God bless you. Thank you. Mr. Bright. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, can't say enough about uh, Larry. Uh, Larry was a, he is a, his family is a member of my church, and he's a, a dedicated person for the community, he's a dedicated employee. I knew Larry when he was on the sheriff's department, he worked his way up to captain. And in order to provide for his family, he did a lot of part-time work, as all of us did in law enforcement, to make ends meet. And Larry had a tragic accident when he was, fell off a building when he was painting part-time and crushed his feet from his feet all the way up to his hips. And from that injury, he had to go on disability and um, taking on part-time. It was said that he would never walk again, but he overcome that. I never called Larry when he didn't pitch in and help. Uh, he got me out of a pinch last year with the police department reunion that we have every year with uh, stepping in for one of the cooks that had a heart attack. and. My heart goes out to Larry, his family, and my prayers go out to Larry and his family. If you knew him, you liked him. I don't know of anybody, even the ones he gave tickets to when he went to court, 
Larry told the DA, he says, look, if you, if, if you just comply with it, he said, I don't care if you dismiss it, as long as you do what you're supposed to do. And Larry always left people happy and proud uh, to, for people to know him. So if any of you know him, you liked him. If any of you didn't know him, what you hear, you liked. So uh, my prayers go out again to his family. Thanks for letting me have a few words about that, Madam Chair. You bet. <clears throat> Vice Chair? It's pretty tough for me because Larry was a, a personal friend like he was the WC and Sheriff Brown. He was close to several of us. Uh, it's, it's, it's really hard when they called me this morning and told me he had passed. I, I, it was hard to believe, but on many occasions, I call him up and talk to him or his son. I dealt with both of them. I dealt with both of them through the police academy. But the, one of the things I used to tell him, I said, you need to slow down. But, you know, telling him to slow down, you were talking to the wall. That was the hardest working individual I have ever seen. We have lost a great mm. employee and a great friend. And, and, and my prayers go out to the family and to him. And those of you that are two or three in here sitting here now, I know have fished with him because I fished with him. And I know that Ben Warren, you fished with him quite a bit. He knew where the fish was at. And if he wasn't working, he was fishing. That's what he said on his recording his answer machine. He's going to be greatly missed, and he will never be able to replace him. God bless him, and God bless this county. Mm -hmm. Amen. Thank you. Um, motion to adjourn. Do I have a motion yes. to adjourn? Second. Second. All in favor. Aye. Aye. Thank you.